take the hot butter, mix it with the ice cream. Freeze it up, cool, you can see it on your screen. Put it in your microwave, make it real hot like a soup or a dip. We call it heat and sip. Very tasty and healthy too. Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. Hypnospace Outlaw is a relatively well-known indie title, but I think mostly for its absurdist humor. It's an alternate reality 90s internet simulator, and the accuracy is astounding. Pages from edgy teens, old people that don't know how to use the internet, children that know how to use the internet only slightly better, weird corporate accounts that just don't give a shit. Everything's represented with such incredible accuracy to how the internet just felt before smaller websites basically all got absorbed into four websites, and it's all presented in a tongue-in-cheek nature that kind of makes it hard to take the game seriously as a whole. And that's fair, the game just doesn't take itself seriously a lot of the time. But I think a lot of people have the impression that it's just a collection of funny pages to gawk at with some occasional reddit mod powers to qualify as a game. But this is also just a really well-designed puzzle game, as well as a really interesting world that's easy to get lost in. You're a hypnospace enforcer, meaning you'll be moderating the content of hypnospace for things like harassment, copyright violations, malicious software, and other things. The game takes place entirely in this fake computer, and it is incredible just how much they shoved into this thing to make it feel legit. Cursor settings, desktop backgrounds, screensavers, downloading and playing music, and viruses. Oh, there's so many viruses. The most important part to your enforcer email will you receive new assigned cases to actually progress the game, as well as the crown jewel of HypnoS. The Hypnospace Explorer. I think the best way to demonstrate why I love this game is to just tell you about one of the most memorable things that happened in my first 30 minutes of playing. I saw this page that was some guy's music reviews and was reading about some weird fake music from fake bands, having a good time, and I saw this band called Seepage that's obviously like a Linkin Park knockoff, and I thought, yeah, that's a funny one-off joke to have on your fake music review page. Linkin Park is funny, I can't help it. And then I entered Teentopia, the zone where all the cool teens hang out, and I opened the page of Zane Rocks 14. Oh god, there they are. This was not just a joke, they committed, and this little breadcrumb of information I found earlier, it came right back and blasted into my ears. And that's the crux of Hypnospace Outlaw. This game's greatest strength is just leaving breadcrumbs for you to follow down the rabbit hole of your choosing, and oh, there are so many rabbit holes. You will very rarely only see one page reference a specific thing, especially if you take the time to slow down and go through all of the pages. Most of them aren't really relevant to the main story, but every now and again you'll find the starting breadcrumb that leads you down a solution to a case, or just some weird thing you wouldn't have known about otherwise. Even if what you find and where it takes you doesn't lead to anything that actually makes progress, I was so engrossed in this world that I never felt like anything was a waste of my time. Every single page entertained me in some way, and I couldn't imagine this game with a single one of them missing. You could spend the whole game investigating only the main pages and blasting through everything as quick as you can, but each page ties together and builds a really convincing world and it's just something you have to play to understand. And it does this out of what are really just personal websites of characters. They'll write about themselves, other people on pages, current events, rumors, dinosaurs. There's no way I could show everything and it would be a disservice to the game to explain too much. There's also a few time skips that allow pages to change and react to the world around them, including things you did. There's no like alternate page that you can miss if you don't do a specific thing, it only changes based on things the game actually makes you do, so not really reacting to you specifically. But the world of Hypnospace is dynamic. Even though you can't directly interact with anyone, the pages changing over time goes a long way to making the characters behind these web pages feel like characters. By the end of the game, I really cared about all these guys, and it's incredible how convincing the websites are. You never meet Zane, but you get to see his life and understand who he is through what he makes here. I'm glad he's doing well for himself these days. The best character by far is the Chowder Man, an old rock star who makes the best music in the whole game and is played by Hot Dad. Check him out on YouTube, he rocks. You'll hear his songs throughout so many different pages. He sings the funny Granny Cream song, a rap for a Pokemon ripoff called Squishers, and the best song in the entire game, a six and a half minute rock opera about shaving. This plays throughout the entirety of the nerd area with a map that takes a really long time to navigate around, I'll talk about that later. And I got slightly stumped here at some point, like really important to the plot, and this is really stupid, but rummaging through these pages and just trying to find the breadcrumb that would lead me where I wanted to go, I was so invested in everything that it got to the point where this song just gives me the same kind of emotional response as like the really intense investigation themes from like Ace Attorney and Danganronpa. Can I admit that? I don't know. If you just want to gawk at the wacky 90s internet simulator game, or just have a really good detective investigation game with an internet backdrop, I could really solidly recommend this to anyone. It's just fantastic, and even if you've seen a lot of the funny, more memed parts of the game, there's so much more to dig into and discover. But 
I'm not done here, no, I'm not done. I have to ask now, what does it say about the unending horrors of capitalism? There's a lot of things that you'll notice just playing casually that are a little off. For one, you're not paid for moderating anything. You get hypno coins, which you can use to buy things like stickers and desktop backgrounds from other web pages. It does make sense in the context of like a video gamey version of the internet, but there's just no way to pay anyone real money in hypnospace. Extra legal commerce is against the rules and you spend time getting rid of it. You cannot trade money around in this place. So anyone who makes these like desktops or 3D model commissions can't get paid for any of it. A little weird, I guess, but if that's the direction of the platform, it makes a little sense, I guess. And then you find Professor Helper and everything goes to shit. Hello there, I'm Professor Helper! So there's this very obviously scam virus just sitting out here and like, yeah, no shit, it just starts flinging ads at you and telling you to buy shit. And there's the extra legal commerce, it's right there. So obviously this is bad and he needs to be taken down. But when you start taking them down, you get this email informing you that Professor Helper is a business partner and that you shouldn't report him. Forwarded by the two CEOs of the company. So the rules don't apply to this guy because... Money? And they're just allowing this on their platform because... Money? I want to give a special mention to Adrian because you interact with him twice and he's up there as my favorite character because he fits into a very underrepresented role being person who makes more money than you will ever see in your life and still cannot write a coherent email. I highly recommend just flagging Professor Helper despite what he says because he will email you the funniest thing in the world. Excuse me. It never ceases to amaze me how dumb some of you can be. I told Dylan that getting random users to do HSBD would be like herding cats, and I was right. I said not to report Professor Helpers. P.S. If it was just a mistake, I apologize. The first case of the game has you searching for copyright violations of Gumshoe Gooper. You find him and some drawings some kids made on some teacher's website and, well, them's the rules, I gotta go. But when the time skip happens, all the old people start a fucking revolution. I stand with Gumshoe Gooper. My free speech to post an American cartoon is being violated. This is a really well-known part of the game, but there's something about it that kind of strikes me as odd that I've never seen anyone mention before. The platform of Hypnospace is no stranger to copyright infringement. You get a case later that's about hunting down a music piracy service and getting rid of the music that's being shared, but it's only because they were sent an email specifically from the copyright holder. And it's pretty clear just during this section that the Hypnospace platform does not care about copyright violations otherwise. So while it's never mentioned, I think that it's very likely that the holder for Gumshoe Gooper specifically requested it to be taken down, and that the uprising about the free speech and whatever it causes, and how people support this wonderful American cartoon, when the blame doesn't actually lie with Hypnospace, but with the cartoon and the copyright holder. Which can only lead us to one conclusion. Gumshoe Gooper has gone woke. You get shown a commercial for Hypnospace near the start of the game, and it's very strange. There's nothing in the commercial really about Hypnospace, it's just people talking about how easy it is to use. Even my grandpa uses it's it. It's easy as pie. And then you unlock the Starport Castle Dream Station, which you quickly learn is in complete mutiny mode. So what happened here is that the five separate zones related to nerd and geek culture stuff got shut down, merged into one zone, and put onto the shittiest server they have to make room for a new zone for more mainstream appeal stuff being added later, like sports and such. So the users of the Dream Station take down all their pages in protest and built the Freelands, which is this whole world map they have to navigate, and they put their pages on here. And only having one of these pieces of information, you might think it's just a weird management thing that happens, but with all this together, you can kind of start to see just the extent of how out of touch management is of Hypnospace and how the users are reacting to this kind of stuff. These are the users that made Hypnospace what it is originally and was their space to exist, but the target demographic has to be more generalized to keep the company growing and the communities that have been built have to be paved over and sanitized. And the CEOs, Adrian and Dylan Merchant, they're pretty bad at their jobs. Dylan in particular decided to get user volunteers to moderate his platform, has an unpaid intern deal with them, and he is obsessed with this stupid game that you eventually find out. The whole reason that he's so obsessed with it is that another service has games on it, and people are leaving his service pretty rapidly, so he drops everything and throws together some shit that sucks and doesn't work. And in addition to all these broken features, you find this girl being harassed on the messaging program that Hypnospace has by these two kids from earlier. Zane has since apologized for these comments, and I'm sure this no longer reflects him as a person. But she just gets some awful messages, and she puts a lot of effort into reporting them, but there's not really a tool for reporting this, so you just kind of send it in and hope for the best. 
and it does get noticed, but you get told by Dylan directly that there's nothing he can do and he'll look into adding this kind of functionality in a different update? Like, this girl is getting harassed on your platform, no doubt a bunch of other shit is going on for way more than just her, and you're okay with this? You're sitting here programming some stupid fucking game instead of doing anything about- Wait. Uh oh. Okay, so this game is about the death of the internet. <laughs> The Death of the Internet is kind of a dramatic title, and obviously the internet isn't just gonna die and stop existing one day, but the internet as we know it, and the platforms that make it up, are gonna fall, and the communities along with them. And this game is just so relevant for how prescient it laid out how these platforms slowly decline, leaving behind the user base for the sake of mass appeal, making sweeping and wildly unpopular functionality changes, in some cases removing functionality for no reason, and just generally being managed like complete shit. Users are moving on to a different service, and the entire plot is just Dylan scrambling to keep his hold onto the user base with new features and pet projects, but he wants to do fun things like make his crappy car game rather than run a stable platform, and you get to witness the decline firsthand. Internet spaces and platforms don't last forever, and as our internet becomes more and more useless for anything except promoted reviews and advertisements, I think a lot of people, myself included, realize just how important these platforms are and just how fragile they are. It's become a joke how adding from Reddit is the only way to get useful product reviews or information about certain hobbies, but it wasn't until most of it was shut down that it was clear that this platform is holding up so much information. Reddit won't die overnight with its API changes, but it will get a lot worse. It has to get worse to make more money, and in its quest to get more money, it will lose what made it great originally and slowly sputter out and die. Reddit's doing it, Discord's doing it, YouTube's been... Oh my god, this platform fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't even want to, like, think about Twitter, man. Fuck that place. This part of the video had to get kind of negative, but it's not really hopeless. Even in the universe of Hypnospace, users are moving on to a new service that fits their needs. It's recent memory how Discord appended all of Skype's user base for being a great functional platform to talk to friends for gaming, and now years later, Discord is kind of that, but way worse and I hate it and I wish it would fuck off forever. I do declare on this day that the second a competitor comes out that isn't reliant on a self-host or made by Roblox, I'm nuking my Discord account from the face of the earth. This is all to say that the death of the internet doesn't mean the internet is going to end. It'll be reborn in a new way, then that way will die out and the cycle will continue. It'll suck. It'll take a while to get better. A lot of communities and valuable information will be lost, but it's happened before. Hypnospace is part of the cycle, then new things came along. And then the next thing. Maybe it'll be better, maybe it'll be worse, but things change. Eventually. Oh yeah, this is about Hypnospace Outlaw. Uh Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. We take the hot butter, mix it with the hot butter, freeze it up, cool, you can see the hot butter. Put it in your microwave, make it real hot, like the hot butter, or a hot butter. We call it butter. Very tasty and healthy too. Granny cream's hot butter.